Welcome to the 24th video of the Amateur Extra License Study. And we're in sub-element 6 alpha now. We're learning about semiconductors. Some of this I can help you greatly with and some of this not so much. In what application is gallium arsenide used as a semiconductor material? Gallium arsenide, you just need to remember, is happy with high frequency and that is in microwave circuits. So microwave, not your actual microwave, but microwave, so high frequency. Which of the following semiconductor materials contains an excess of free electrons? That is the N type. So if you think of N as negative, having free electrons. And I have a picture here. N type has donor impurity that contributes to free electrons. P type has acceptor impurity, which creates a hole. And the hole is the acceptor. Just like if you were to fall into a really big hole, it accepts you. Uh, another way, N type is negative, P type is the P hole. So that's how I remember that. Gross but true. Why does a PN junction diode not conduct current when reversed bias? The holes in the P type material and electrons in the N type material are, are separated by the applied voltage, widening the depletion region. So the PN junction, if you have the negative, the N, which has excess electrons, and then you have the P-type over here, when you reverse bias, you're sending negative voltage this way. You're sending your electrons backwards, which is going to push away the electrons. So it's going to create a depletion region. It means it's not going to conduct. You won't, if you forward bias, what happens is it goes bloop, and then they flow right across. So remember, PN junctions, when they're reverse biased, it widens the depletion region. What is the name given to an impurity atom that adds holes? There's your word, holes, to a semiconductor crystal structure. The holes accept you. It's an acceptor impurity. How does DC input impedance at the gate of a field effect transistor compare with that of a bipolar transistor? A field effect transistor has a higher input impedance. J, uh, J, uh, not JFETs, BJTs, bipolar junction transistors, have a lower input impedance. So the FET has a higher input impedance. Most MOSFETs are known for having higher input impedance. What is the beta of a bipolar junction transistor? That is the change in collector current with respect to the change in base current. So that is a comparison between the two. It's a, it's a ratio of collector current with respect to base current. You can go look up beta of BJTs and do a whole college career on that. Which of the following indicates that a silicon NPN junction transistor is biased on? So you can take your multimeter and if the transistor is biased on and you measure the voltage across the base in the emitter, you should see a 0.7 volt drop across that junction. Remember there's, two, there's a P and an N and an N and a P depending on whether you have an NPN or PNP, but you should see a voltage drop just like a diode because it is basically a half of a diode. Now they act completely different because of how they're made. So don't, don't think that you can just take two diodes and make a transistor, you can't. Uh, base to emitter voltage of approximately 0.6 to 0.7 volts. And if you remember that a diode also shows that same voltage drop. There's only uh, two answers that have 0.6 to 0.6. <laughs> this one says ohms, ohms, 6 volts, 0.6 to 0.7 volts. So, And it says voltage. 
So that is your answer. That should be really easy to remember. And I hope you get this one on the test. Remember, you're only getting one of these on the test, but you have to know them all. What is the term for frequency at which the grounded base current gain of a bipolar junction transistor has decreased to 0.7 of the gain obtainable at 1 kilohertz? And that is known as the alpha cutoff frequency. So the gain decreased to 0.7 of the gain attainable at 1 kilohertz. And that is just a measurement. One kilohertz is what they chose to measure it at. And that is the alpha cutoff frequency. So 0.7 of the gain. Uh, the, there's alpha, there's beta, and then there's alpha cutoff frequency. And um, there is a formula to find alpha, but it, it doesn't really matter right now. What is a depletion mode field effect transistor? An FET, or a field effect transistor, that exhibits a current flow between source and drain when no gate voltage is applied. So I have a picture of one right here. This is the insides of that N-channel depletion mode MOSFET. You can see that there's lots of N, lots of N. So you got N-dope region, then you have the N-channel. So what happens is it allows current to flow strangely without any gate uh, current. So that is a current flow between source and drain when no gate voltage is applied. So it works with depletion mode. Okay, in figure E61, what is the schematic symbol for an N-channel dual gate MOSFET? Okay, so MOSFETs and JFETs are a little bit different in how they're made. So that right there is the, the way they're made. This is an N-channel MOSFET. Notice that it has three right here. Three. So there's different ways. You, <laughs> there's a lot to remember on this, I know, because you have enhancement and you have depletion mode. Um, P-channel MOSFET, but notice the direction of the arrows. N-channel points in, in. P-channel points out. So these are all MOSFETs of some sort. Enhancement, depletion. I'd, the only difference is where this arrow sticks. So you, you can really get deep in this stuff if you want to go research it. And... This is a JFET. Look at the picture of a JFET now. It's a little bit different. So this is an in-channel JFET because it's pointing in. This is an in-channel MOSFET because it's pointing in. And so MOSFET, JFET. That's what we need to, that's what we need to know for this, this next part. So in figure E61, we're looking for the N-channel dual gate MOSFET. Well, if you look, there's only two that have dual gate. Gate 1, gate 2, gate 1, gate 2. So check this out. You just narrowed it down to 50% already. So which one is the N-channel? Well, the arrow points N. So that is 4. 4 is your N channel, because it's the, the arrow is pointing in. That actually has a name. I think it's called a bull, if I'm not mistaken. Um, don't know what side I saw that on. Don't quote me on that. But it does. that thing actually has a name, and I forget what it is. Okay, let's try out our skills again. In figure E61, which is the schematic symbol for a P-channel junction FET? Now, remember, that junction was least complicated out of all those. It's number one. It's just the table, and it's pointing out. Remember, N points in, P points out. So the answer is one. And we have one more. What is the purpose of connecting Zener diodes between a MOSFET gate and its source or drain. That is to protect the gate from static damage. 
all of these MOSFETs, you know, when they come shipped to you, they are shipped in anti-static bags. And a lot of times they even have those built in. Uh, I don't have any images of those that are built in, but sometimes they have the Zener diodes built in, and that is to protect the gate from static damage. These things are highly susceptible to static damage. If you have static discharge go through them, it could burn up that junction. So, question 12 of alpha, 6 alpha, is to protect the gate from static damage. This has been a lot. Go take a break. So hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe to my channel to show support. But I think it's time to take a break or a nap or something because, wow, that was a lot. Hey, thank you so much for watching my videos. I hope they're helpful. If I make any mistakes, leave those mistakes, spell them out in clear detail in the comments, and I will take it with a grain of salt and learn. I uh, won't be mad at you at all if you're nice about it. I'm Robbie W1RCP. Good luck. We're almost halfway through.